الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وعز المرسلين أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all the prophets from Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, the last messenger and his household. One of the important topics that I would like to talk about today is Islam through the, the perspective of dialogue and tolerance. Because those are some important tools for any civilization to exist. Even your body, if it has so many antibodies, particles in it, no matter how strong it is, it's going to come to a point and vanish because it is fighting everything around it. In addition to the external germs, bacteria, viruses, it has inside killer, cannot tolerate its own cells. Civilizations could be something very similar. When I consider a powerful lasting civilization like Islam has been there for about 1400 years and it has been carrying the same core beliefs and ethics, there is something here I have to consider. I cannot just follow the media and say, oh, Islam is, you know, violent movement. Islam has no tolerance when it comes to different opinions or ethnicities. Just name it. This is not accepted. This is not accepted for simple reason, because otherwise, this civilization would vanish, will never exist. Because if it is creating enemies all over the places, and that's not happening. Islam was spreading all over the places. Uh, among four or five people nowadays, one of them is Muslim. And only 30% of those, about 30%, about 30% of those people are Arabic people. So Islam started in Arabia, but yet the majority of Muslims are non-Arabic. 30% are Arabic and the rest, like about 70% are not Arabic. So if we're to be a violent civilization that does not open or does not have a place for tolerance, if it were to be a civilization that encapsulate its ideas and deprive the rights of freedom of a speech and the freedom of a practice and so many other good human rights, this religion, this civilization will never, ex will never exist. If this civilization, when I say civilization, I does not mean the irresponsible behave of certain groups or some Muslims. I don't. I don't have to deal with that. I'm, when I say civilization, I'm talking about the objective view of Islam from its pure resources and authenticated ones, not just any civilization, any talk, any book, any speech, any irrational or minor group. I don't have to deal with that. I deal with the core authenticated resources. And one of them is Al-Quran Al-Kareem. 
Islam did not say everyone is my enemy and it has to be terminated, never ever. As a matter of fact, when I look at the Quran, the constitution of this civilization, and that the book, all the Muslims, they consider it holy and sacred and never been altered. We delivered the message and we are protecting it. We are protecting the Quran, the constitution of the message. If I look at this pure, authenticated constitution of Islam, Al Quran, I don't see in any Quranic verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God the Almighty, is saying a certain group of people is your enemy, go and terminate it. No. Or go kill it. We don't have this. We don't have any call in the Quran that consider a human is an enemy. Or a race is an enemy that you have to get rid of. We don't have this. But we have a very obvious enemy. Your enemy is the devil, Satan. That means your enemy is ignorance. Your enemy is untruthful ways and believes. This is your enemy, not a human being. And that's why we have so many narrations like the one was narrated by Imam Ali alayhi salam. People are two kinds. It's either a brother in faith or a brother is a fellow human. So you have to have this kind of bond, brotherhood. The only time Islam start considering enmity is if you are fighting me. Then as a self-defense, I have to fight you. If, the, if that's the only solution. And we gave so many examples that the Prophet وسلم, suffered from Quraysh for so many years and he did not just initialize a uh, fight against them. He, he was patient for, with them for about 10 years. And even when he became very strong, he did not go and revenge. He did not go and, you know, look after them to terminate them as a way of revenging. No, it was very rational, very moral. So all this, now let's see, did really Islam, did really Islam consider the dialogue and has this tolerance with others? Definitely, yes. Examples. From the Quran, let's start from the Quran before we start about talking about any other things. With the Quran, look, Islam did not just respect you even if you have a different opinion. It also gives you the freedom to analyze, talk, think. The, the freedom to prove and disprove. Even if you were to be a disbeliever who might deny the Almighty God. Very clearly, when Ahadun min al Mushrikeen as Tajarak, this is when Islam was very strong. It was not weak, very strong. But yet, if those disbelievers, if one of your enemy came to you, Prophet Muhammad, asking you about Islam, asking to have a shelter, asking in a very civilized way, or he has some wonders about Islam, help him. Give him your hand. Support him. Help him out. And 
the por one portion of the ayah, that means give him what he's asking you as shelter-wise. Protect him. Why? Because he can listen to the message. So he has time to think, analyze. In another word, give him a source of freedom where he can think. And it is opposite to the media nowadays. Nowadays, if you, are, you do not agree with me, you are going to get killed. And then the media, okay, look at the Muslims, they kill the Christians. They are killing Muslims and the Christians. They are killing a human being. They are killing innocent people. It's the, what's happening is not Islam. And they are trying to spread it by sword and weapon. It is a way that they are killing Islam under the name of their own personal verdicts and fatawa, which has nothing to do with Islamic belief. Another way we look at it, when we see the Prophet or the in Quran, when start guiding us how to deal with non-Muslim people. When ahad, well, well, some, some verses we have, when it comes to talking to Christian and Jews, do not say, oh, you go to hellfire, I'm going to heaven, I'm right, you are wrong. No, 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 no. does not have to be that way. It was very, very rational way to open a rational dialogue to come to a rational solution. When Islam was talking to the Christian and Jews in the time of the Prophet وسلم, as well as in every period, what did he say? قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَىٰ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ The Christians and Jews, the Qur'an used to refer to them as the people of the book. Which is a way of respect. That means Qur'an respected the previous holy books. The Bible, the New Testament, the Old Testament respected knowledge, respected the sources of knowledge, though I might differ with it, though I claim you have some stuff wrong in it, so though I claim it got altered, yet I respect that you have source of knowledge. And then, since you are the people of the book, since you believe in God that I believe in as a Muslim, since you believe in the prophets that I believe in as a Muslim, like Abraham, Moses, Noah, Jesus, peace be upon them. So since your morals is very similar to mine, since your core beliefs in its essence is very close to mine, since you believe in the Creator, and I believe in the same Creator, since you believe that God is there to help the human race, to guide the human race, and that's why he sent them messengers and prophets and books, and I believe in the same thing. So why we Muslims and Christians or Jews, why don't we come to a common ground? قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَىٰ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ This is Al-Qur'an. This is not my statement. Let's come, Muslims, Christians, Jews, let's come to a common ground where we worship God. And do not associate partners with them. At least we share this much of belief. Let's look at it as a strong point because humanity is in need of us as believers. Because we, the believers, we have to protect others. We have to guide others. We have to help others. 
We have so many problems to talk about. We have so many problems to solve. We have so many challenges as believers. Since we care about the human, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares about the human, be a human being, so why don't we come to common ground, to a common ground where we show the mercy of God through our efforts and through our good faith and behave. It's not good enough to say, I believe in a merciful God, but yet when it comes to practical, practical behave, then you are different to human. We have so many problems to solve. Family, we have so many dysfunctional families, high divorce rates, drugs problems, crimes, people careless about environment, careless about others' rights, careless about life, careless about natural resources, careless about other human fellows. They are careless about so many things. Why don't we start educating people, helping people, supporting others, helping the need, the need, the needy ones? Why? That's come to uncommon ground. That's the first sign of a dialogue Islam made. And that's why we saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam opening so many debates and dialogues with other religions. When Nasara Najran, the Christian of Najran, came to the Prophet, they came to his mosque and they, they practiced their Christian rituals in his mosque and no one offended them and no one discriminated against them. And no one considered what they are doing as a sign to be punished. No, the Prophet left them and he, he tolerated that. And this is another example. And even the Christians of Najran, even they disagreed with the Prophet. They believed in Jesus. But they did not believe in Muhammad وسلم, as a prophet. Yet the prophet did not say, you are infidels. Go kill them. No, 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 no. No, that's not accepted. This is the real practice of Islam. Another ayah, and we have so many ayat, so many verses from Quran. When you talk to them, when you debate others, when you enter with an argument with those who do not agree with you, make sure to pick the proper words, to use the proper style. وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ This is from Al-Quran. When you are talking to them, when you are debating them, pick the proper words. Use the perfect, the better, or the best style that you can afford. There is no place to shout. There is no place to hate. There is no place to say bad word. There is no place to downgrade others. You have to respect others. That's another Islamic verse. So, when it comes to dialogue, Islam showed us all those beautiful images. Even from the beginning, when we talk about the human race from our Adam till this moment, because maybe we had different Adams. Maybe before our Adam, we have so many Adams. Our Adam, the Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, the first human of our race, in, in this planet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created him, he gave us so many good lessons. Look at so many Quranic verses, important ones. He was going to create Adam. Then the angels said, 
أَتَجْعَلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُوا فِيهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us the importance of respecting others' opinion. He is creating Adam and he knows what's going to happen and he is the omnipresent and all-knowing yet he told the angels about this new create creature that he is going to create though he is not in need of it but to show us how to communicate with others it's a lesson for us otherwise Allah will not document this in the Quran he is documented this documenting this in the Quran it is in the Quran to teach us to give us the lesson even if you are the big boss even you are the top-notch guy in the country even if you were to be the president the head of the family the head of your company yet that does not mean you are better than others in a way in a superior way it is your opinion or no opinion no. even if you believe you are right give a place for keep a place for dialogue and what we call nowadays kind of like brainstorming do not say i know even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the only knowing, as I said, the all knowing, yet He gave us a lesson. He talked to the angels. I'm gonna have a vice chairman, a human. Allah is beyond time, Allah is beyond place, Allah he is not like any materialistic things that we know. Allah is beyond our understanding but out of his mercy now people they are gonna argue why Allah created Adam this is not our subject but out of his mercy he created he created this human he called it Adam but he told the angels about and he let the angel to show their objection the angel said, They say, according to some narrations, they say that the angel knew that this human is going to ruin earth, corrupt earth, shed the blood. How did they know? Because they so similar Adams before him, close to his setup, features, attributes. So they, con they concluded it's going to be like the previous creatures. That's according to some narrations. Anyway, here the point is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, though He is Allah, the Almighty God, the only knowing. The all-knowing, the omnipresent, Al-Alim Al-Khabir, yet he opened source of a dialogue with the angels. Gave him a freedom of speech to talk, object, analyze. When they replied to God, when he told them about this human being, they replied, Oh God, are you going to create someone who is going to corrupt and shed the blood in this beautiful earth? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say then? I know what you do not know. He did not say, be quiet, I'm God, you are not God. No, 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 no. This is another way how to be polite with others. Even if you feel you understand more than what they do. And the story continue. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angels to make sujood, they all made the sujood as a sign of submission, except one being, Satan, the devil. He was from al jinn He was not an angel. He was from al jinn Different kind of Creator. 
It was different creature, different kind of creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him, he disobeyed. Because we believe that the angels, they do not disobey God. But he was not an angel. Well, this is some different opinions than other religions maybe. God did not say, oh, you are a bad guy, get out of... No, 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 no. Allah, even he, even devil disobeyed Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the opportunity to the devil to defend himself, to defend his opinion, to defend his reasoning, to defend his decision. Why you are not submitting to me like other angels? And he had no powerful evidence. So this is another, another way we look at it from the Quran, how to open dialogue and tolerate other people. And this is what Allah the Almighty taught us. This is a sign, a, power, a powerful sign from Al-Quran. And so we have so many other ayat that talked about talking to people in a proper way, opening dialogues with others, tolerate others. Even when it comes to religion, Al-Islam said it very clearly. لا إكراه في الدين لا إكراه في الدين I do not force you to be Muslim. It is up to you. And another ayah, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ it's up to you whether you want to be a believer or you want to be a disbeliever. It's up to you. But you hold responsibility. You are responsible about your cause. You are responsible about your judgment. You are responsible about what's going to happen to you in this life and the hereafter when it comes to blessing and when it comes to less support and less help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, gen the generous the merciful. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ This is another sign. When the Prophet used to deal with the disbelievers, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَدِينَ I have my religion and you have your religion. That's So, did Islam open the door for dialogue? Yes, definitely. That's the first thing to do. The first thing is to let the others think, talk, analyze. And even some, some Quranic verses we have when the Prophet used to argue with the non-believers. He did not say, oh, you non-believers, go to hellfire. I don't want to talk to you. No, we gave you so many examples. It's up to you whether you want. Yes. The Quran told them, if you deny on purpose the Prophet, if you deny the mess on purpose the message of Islam, and you have no evidence, and you have no proof, you are going to get those consequences. Islam said it. But after what? After he said, قُلْ هَاتُوا show, show me your evidence. Think, use your intelligence. Why you are listening to this and that? Why you are worshipping idols? Why you are worshipping stones? Don't you pay attention? Show me this evidence. Show me that proof. And they were, care they were careless. And they, they did not want to listen. And they did not want to follow any rational approach. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them their consequences. It's not just, oh, you don't believe, oh, you are dead, or you're going to go to hellfire. No. وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا If I do not send you a messenger, if I do not prove to you that you are wrong, if I do not have enough energy, knowledge, and power to argue with you, to deal with your questions, to answer your questions, then it's not your problem, it's my problem. Allah will never punish those who have strong evidence and they think it is the right way. We are talking about those who deny the truth. 
Those who know for a fact they are wrong and they insist that they are right and others are wrong. We are dealing with such kind of a group. Or a group of people, those who are not willing to listen, not willing to hear other opinions. This, this is very dangerous. This is very dangerous fact. And this is a main obstacle when it comes to changing the society, helping the society, improving the society, integrating the society. Because if you do not let me to talk, if you do not give me the freedom of speech, if you are all the time isolating me and you are not willing to listen to me and you do not give me any chance or opportunity to prove my point, then there is no way I can help you changing your society or improving your community or integrating what you are going through. And there is no way for prosperity or development. And that's why Islam insisted, insisted of, on freedom of speech because this is the key to change. This is the key to improve. This is the key to develop. This is the key to convince you which is right and which is wrong. This is the key to show you the right path from the wrong path. Through the freedom of speech, through dialogue, through tolerance. If you do not believe in Allah, if you do not believe in Quran, if you are a disbeliever in this or that, okay, show me your proof. This is Islam. Let's have a let's open a dialogue. Let's talk about it. Show me your evidences. I do not just say, no, you are wrong. And you have no right to tell me I am wrong right away. And even the Prophet وسلم, when he was arguing with Al-Kafirin, with the disbelievers, what did he tell, tell them? It is either we, the believers, are right, could be right, or you are wrong, or you could be right or wrong. There is a truth. Let's go search for it. Let's approve. Let's use our rational thinking. And through that, we can come to a real perfect, tolerated society. You may not believe in what I believe, but you respect me because I am a man of proof. I am a man of logic. I am a man of faith. I am a man of message. I'm a man of principles. You might not agree with me 100%, but you are going to show me respect after that. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته